Welcome to our worship at home this morning. And um, I'm speaking today from my study uh, here in Eastleigh. Good to have you with us and may you be blessed. We have um, an extended worship time today with a number of other people taking part. And uh, it's good to have that, that experiment continuing on and we'll see how we get on. And I do hope you'll be blessed and encouraged in your faith. We're going to start with a centering prayer as we worship uh, anew and afresh this day. So Heavenly Father, please come amongst us by your Holy Spirit. We know that you are here, but maybe sense it really deep inside. Renew our hope and our joy. Renew us in our thinking, our perspectives. And may the joy of the Lord be our strength. And as a scattered community, may we have that sense of unity, that oneness in you. As we seek to live for you, day in, day out. For your name's sake. Amen. It's great to be able to worship with you this morning. Today we're thinking about some travellers on the road to Emmaus. And on that journey, they met someone. Now we know they met Jesus. They didn't know that at the time. Have you ever bumped into somebody that seems to know you or know something about you and you're looking at them and you're wondering, who are you? Where do I know you from? And then suddenly they say something or they do something and you recognise them. And then the conversation changes because you feel relaxed, you know who they are. Very similar to today's story. Jesus walked with the people. The men walked with Jesus, although they didn't know it at the time. So for our craft activity this morning, we're going to make a sign that says, Walk with Jesus. How fantastic is that? Yes. Because especially in these times, we need to remember that Jesus is with us. We need to remember that he's with us in our houses, in our flats, in our bungalows. He's with us wherever we live, wherever we go. When we're on our daily exercise, he walks with us. So I hope you enjoy the craft activity. We're going to start it in a second. Obviously, can't do it when I saw my walk. So, with a bit of movie magic, I'm going to finish my walk. I'm going to enter my front room. And we're going to make our door sign saying, walk with Jesus. 
Are you ready? Here we go. Did you notice much? Great, wasn't it? Now what we're going to do to make this incredible Walk With Jesus hanger, I know you're desperate to make this, aren't you? Yes, but wait a minute, you need some things first. The first things you need are a sheet of paper. You need a sheet of paper. Card's fine, paper's okay too. You're going to need a pen or a pencil, something to draw your foot with. And then if you want to make it look amazing and fantastic, you're going to need some felt tips, crayons or paints, if that's what you prefer, to decorate your foot hanger with. And then, of course, we're going to need a pair of scissors to cut our foot out, sellotape, and of course, a piece of string as well. So the first thing you need to do to make your foot hanger is you're going to need a foot. Yay! Oh, whoa. oh, I hope you've got clean socks on now. Yes, you're going to need your foot to draw around your foot. So take a sheet of paper, take your foot, put your foot on the paper, hey, and now draw around it. That's it, draw around it, all the way around. Excellent. Let's have a look. Good. Does it look like this? No. Yours is a bit smaller. Yeah. Mine's, I've got large feet, haven't I? Yeah. But don't worry. It doesn't matter if you've got small feet or large feet. Just draw around the foot you've got. You might want to draw around your grown-up's foot. That's fine too. Or grown-ups, you might want to draw around your children's feet. Absolutely no problem. Once you've drawn around it, you need to put some words on it. I've got walk with Jesus. So walk with Jesus, because that's what we're remembering. We're remembering that journey on the road to Emmaus and actually that Jesus walks alongside us in all of our journeys. On this one, I've got the picture of a cross. On the one that I did earlier, I've got a picture of the empty tomb. So, sit, write those words down, walk with Jesus, because Jesus walks with us in life. Now, once you've bubble wrapped it, once you've drawn it around, colour it in. Don't forget to colour it in. Make it really bright and colourful so it's really noticeable. Now, scissors. And you need to cut your walking with Jesus out. Remember, you can take your time on this. You don't have to rush it. If you need to, you can pause the video. That's fine too. You can come back to it. Or you can, you know, get the start of it and finish it off later. Entirely what you want to do. But that's it. Once we cut round our cut round our foot, we've got our template. We've cut round it. Now what we need to do is we need to get that piece of string. Do you remember the string we had earlier in the cello tape? Just turn your string around so you create a loop. Cello tape the back to finish off your door hanger. So we've now got our door hanger. Door hanger is pretty amazing, isn't it? Walk with Jesus. So place it somewhere that you're going to see it regularly. You might want to place it on your front door so that when you go out for your daily exercise, that you remember that Jesus is with you during that walk. And you might want to say a prayer or you might want to see things and see if you can notice Jesus in your journeys. You might want to put it in your bedroom door to remind you when you get up, and when you go to bed, that Jesus walks with you during the day, through the good, through the bad and through these times that we're in at the moment during lockdown. I hope you've enjoyed this craft. It's been really good to share this time with you. Stay safe, take care, and remember, Jesus always walks with you. Oh there, unseen angels with us today. Oh, they were definitely around with Jesus watching and interacting, celebrating with songs of glory at his birth, attending and comforting in the wilderness and at Gethsemane, guarding his tomb, ready to joyfully announce he is risen, Jesus is alive.
They were there among the clouds, watching and waiting to welcome him back home. Sun is setting in the west, angels watching over me, my lord. Sleep, my child, take me pure rest. Angels watching. Good morning and welcome to worship and what a privilege it is to be able to all join together in worship even though we're worshipping remotely. This is a new experience for me um, because although we're worshipping together on a Sunday morning I'm recording this on a Monday evening at about 10 o'clock at night because it's the only time that I have peace when the children are in bed although I won't guarantee that they are asleep. So here I am talking to my computer, but aware that this will be shared on YouTube, which is also a new and fairly uncomfortable experience. Um, but it's still a great opportunity for us to remember um, that we can come together and worship and we can read the scriptures together and learn from them. And God is with me as much sat in my living room on a Monday evening as he is with you now, as he is on a Sunday morning when we normally worship in church. The reading we're going to be looking at today is one of my favourites um, and it comes towards the end of Luke's Gospel and in my Bible it's entitled The Walk to Emmaus. Now this event takes place on the day of Jesus's resurrection and if we go back a few um, verses to the beginning of chapter 24 um, we could read the account of the resurrection of Jesus and we find that some of the women have gone to Jesus's tomb on the first day of the week and they found that the stone has been rolled away from the tomb and the tomb is empty. Jesus is not there. And they've met with two men dressed in dazzling white, I'm going with angels here, um, who have said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And we're told the women remembered, and they went back to the rest, to the eleven disciples of Jesus and the companions, and they told them, but the disciples didn't believe them. The testimony of women was not seen as credible, and they thought the women were just telling them an idle tale. And yet Peter ran to the tomb and he stooped down and he looked in. And he found out that the linen clothes that Jesus's body would have been wrapped in were there, but that there was no body. And we're told that Peter went home and he was amazed at what had happened. And then following on from that account of the resurrection, when the story has been told of Jesus alive, risen from the dead, but no one has yet seen him. We, we have this account and we've got two followers of Jesus and they're leaving Jerusalem. On a day when they've heard about the empty tomb, 
on a day when everyone's confused. They are walking away from their fellow believers, and we don't know why, but they're taking this journey some seven miles to Emmaus, and they're talking. And while they're talking on the way, a stranger joins them and asks them what has happened. As I read our passage today from Luke 24, beginning at verse 13, I'd like to invite you to try and enter into the passage. Try and imagine yourself, maybe you're one of the disciples walking along. How are you feeling? Maybe you're looking on, watching the disciples and thinking about what's going on as they have this encounter with this stranger. So we read from Luke 24, verse 13 to verse 35, and then I'll share a few of my simple reflections and thoughts as we walk through the reading. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word, and may he open up the scriptures to us as we explore them together for a few minutes now. I was flicking through the news the other day on my phone, um, 
and I was looking for a story other than the normal stories uh, about the coronavirus. And I found a story um, about a crew of three who are coming back from the International Space Station after many months away. And the BBC News report said that they were coming back to a world which was very different from the one which they had left. And I was thinking about this and thinking how true these words were because they're coming back to a world where so many shops are closed, so many streets are empty, businesses are shut down, schools are mainly shut. When I go out on my daily exercise, if I walk past a park, you notice that the play parks are locked up because the children are not allowed to go out and play for good reason, because they need to keep other people and themselves safe. But the world is very different for all of us than it was just a few months ago. And for these three people coming back, they can't celebrate with their loved ones in the way they had hoped. They can't have that hug and that warm welcome as they return safely home. How strange it must be to come back to a world so different. And I've had times in my own life where it's felt like the world has changed for me, but it's been the same for everyone else. I particularly remember when my first child was born and I remember walking at the time through Winchester and I was pushing the pram and I was feeling a little bit hormonal and a little bit wobbly as you do in the weeks after giving birth. And I felt like I was in this bubble and it was like the world had changed, but nobody outside this bubble realised and life was going on as normal for them. But I knew that the world would never be the same again because I had this little scrap who spent quite a lot of the time screaming in a pram and it was my job to love him and care for him. The world had changed. And I'm sure many of you have experienced that too, whether it's through a life event which has been good and positive for you, or maybe it's when you've lost someone you love and you wonder how everyone can act as if everything's normal when you know everything is not normal and it doesn't feel like it will ever be normal again. I think we can understand a little bit of what these disciples were going through when they were walking on that journey. We don't know why they've walked away from all their other friends, why they haven't found solidarity in staying with everyone else. But maybe it was too difficult. The pain and the confusion, the anxiety, the doubts, everything they believed about Jesus feels like it's been crushed. Even the knowledge that Jesus was dead and buried has been taken away from them and they don't understand now what has happened. And so... They are walking and they're talking. They're sharing their fears and their doubts and they're trying to make sense of what has happened and of what they are going through now. And we read about this encounter with the stranger on the road. And as we read it today, we probably think the strangest thing is the fact that this man is coming along and he's walking closer than two metres away from them. And when we go out and about, um, we avoid one another. I know that I step away from the pavement and I walk up driveways in order to let people pass me with two metres distance. And we give a kind of apologetic grin to each other, a smile and maybe a nod as we avoid each other. And I wonder what it will be like to walk close to people who aren't in my household again, how that will feel. But this stranger who we know as Jesus comes up and he does walk with these two disciples and he talks with them and he asks them what they're sharing as they journey together. And we're told that they're kept from recognising Jesus and that they're incredulous that these things have been going on in Jerusalem. And he seems to be the only one who doesn't know anything about them. And then they open up to him. They talk and they share. And we, we see here there's something about Jesus, even when they don't recognise it's Jesus with them. They are able to open their hearts up to this stranger and they pour it all out. 
And we're told when he asks them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? That they stood still looking sad. And one of them, Cleopas, answered, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know these things that have taken place there in these days? And they tell him all about Jesus of Nazareth, a prophet mighty indeed before God and the people. And how the chief priests and leaders handed him over to be crucified. And they go on, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And in those few words, we feel the crushing disappointment of these followers of Jesus, when all of their hopes and dreams, everything they've invested in the one they believed would be the one to save them, to redeem Israel, the Messiah. We hear how all these hopes and dreams have been crushed. Their sense of purpose in life, their sense of direction, their certainty, their faith in God, their faith in Jesus has all been crushed. They're in despair and they are without hope. But more than this, they go on. This is now the third day. Some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. They did not find his body there. And they told us about angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it as they had said. But they did not see him. Have you ever had that experience where everything you believed about God seems to be called into question? where everything that was certain doesn't feel like it's certain anymore, that the ground's been pulled from under your feet and you don't know what to believe. There seems to be this mismatch between faith and reality. And the more sincerely and passionately you've believed something, the more difficult it is when that is called into doubt, called into question. All this and more, the disciples pour out as they walk and they talk, unbeknown to them, with Jesus. And I love the fact that they're talking with Jesus and they're sharing all of these things, even though they don't recognise it. And I love the fact that Jesus is walking with them and listening to them in all of their pain and their doubt. He has come close. He is there. And you'll notice that at this point in the story, Jesus tells them off. He reprimands these two disciples. And I think what they're going through is quite understandable. But Jesus says, oh, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Jesus tells them off and don't we all sometimes need Jesus to pull us up and to tell us how it really is? And I would rather be reprimanded by Jesus than encouraged by anyone else. Because it doesn't stop there. Jesus goes on to talk with them, to walk them through the scriptures, to help them to understand in a deeper way what they thought they already knew. Jesus takes the time. He does not walk away. He continues to care for them and to be with them, even though they've been questioning and doubting. They've been lost and confused. And then we get to this point in the story where it could have gone one of two ways because they get to the place where they were going and we're told it's drawing dark. And that's the point at which they could have parted company with Jesus. But they invited him to stay with them. And as he eats with them and as he breaks bread, blesses it and breaks it and gives it to them, then their eyes are open. Then they recognise that Jesus has been with them all of this time, that Jesus is alive. 
And just as all those hopes and those dreams and those possibilities come flooding back in and the good news overwhelms their souls, Jesus vanishes from their sight. And then just as they were sharing their disappointment and their despair, now they're sharing their joy. And they're saying to one another, we knew he was with us, really. Weren't our hearts burning within us as he walked with us on the road, as he opened the scriptures to us? And you feel that their joy and their sense of celebration is so much more because they've come through this valley. And now they've reached the other side. And they race back. It doesn't matter anymore that it's late and the day's almost over. But they race back to Jerusalem and they've got this amazing news to tell the followers of Jesus there. But they've been beaten to it, of course, because Peter has already had an experience of the risen Lord himself. And as they run in the door, the 11 disciples and the other followers of Jesus tell them, the Lord has risen indeed and he's appeared to Peter and they're able to say yes Jesus is alive he's appeared to us too and he revealed himself to us what an amazing story and this is a story of two disciples on the day Jesus was raised from the dead who had that experience of the risen Lord but it's also our story Let's not just leave it as something that happened in the past, but let's recognise that Jesus invites us to step into this story and to walk through that journey. We're invited to think about where we are in our relationship with Jesus. How are you feeling? Where are you on that journey? Are you at that point where it feels like Jesus is not there? where you believe that the one who promised never to leave you or forsake you has in fact done so. Maybe you're feeling the loneliness of self-isolation. Maybe you've lost someone you loved and you're bereaving. You're overwhelmingly sad or you're angry or you're confused. Maybe you're a key worker and you're scared or you're traumatised by seeing what other people are going through are going through and nursing other people through this. Where on the journey are you? And as you think about that, I want to invite you to think about where is Jesus? Where does this story tell us Jesus is? And I want to invite you to talk with others if you are struggling, if you are at that point on the journey where it's painful and it's hard. Maybe you're walking away from people who seem to have all the answers because you're not there. I want to encourage you to pick up the phone and to talk to someone. Or if you're into a, your electronics, to message someone or Zoom, which seems to be something we're doing a lot nowadays. Don't keep it to yourself. Jesus meets with us. This passage promises that Jesus is with us. And I believe Jesus meets with us through others as we share and we are honest with one another. And we're not to be ashamed of our struggles and our doubts because often we come out stronger the other side. But our faith is not a true faith if we just say what other people seem to think we should say. Or we say we believe what other people say we should believe. It's in the reality of walking that journey with Jesus through the difficult times as well as the joyful ones that we are formed as disciples, as those who are friends of Jesus. And my prayer is that if you are struggling in your journey, that your eyes may be opened and that you may recognise Jesus walking with you in that. And it's okay that sometimes we can't see Jesus with us when we're in that moment. Sometimes it's other people holding on to us and holding on to faith for us as we struggle. But my prayer, my hope is that there will come a time when you can look back and say, Jesus was with me and I see it now. Jesus is alive and he has not left me. Maybe you're at a point where you know Jesus is with you. 
you're full of that Easter resurrection joy. My prayer for you is that you may be the one who helps others in their journey. Not judging, not having all the answers when people struggle, struggle, but journeying with others and helping others to know the presence of Jesus with them. I want to invite you as we close to just take a moment's quiet. And you might want to shut your eyes. And I want you just for a moment to think about the story that we've heard. Quiet in your hearts. And talk with Jesus. Tell him if it's really hard. The great thing about doing this remotely is you can pause this video if you need that time. Be honest with Jesus. Sit there and listen and wait for Jesus' presence with you. Pray that you may know he is there and invite Jesus to stay with you on that journey. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you journeyed with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. You were alive, but they did not know it. And yet you met with them you spoke to them and you revealed yourself to them. Be with us, Lord, as we walk the journey of discipleship through difficult times. Help us too to know your presence with us. Talk with us as we talk with you. Reveal yourself to us and give us the strength to take the next steps on our journey. For in your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you for joining us this morning as we've worshipped together, as we've sung, as we've prayed, as we've listened to the scriptures and we've reflected. And thank you to everybody who's taken part this morning and thank you to Tiz who's put this video together for us. We hope that some of you will join with us afterwards in our Zoom coffee and chat. I'd like to end with um, an Irish bless blessing which seemed appropriate for today. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.